31 when he ends his five-year spell here. And it looks as if Amoruso on the ball, he too will be bidding farewell shortly. Looks it. Exchanges passes with Kinesia. Mother Dunfermline uh, chasing the ball at this stage. The burst pass to Kinesia. The pass was behind balls. But he got the shot away. He got the shot in. Two and a half minutes gone. Rangers are ahead. And that could be a huge stride towards the title. It's a great start from Rangers. That man, that man there, Michael Moore, scores so many important goals at Ibrox. But it's great player, all the boo, Kinesia, Michael Moore, just staying on side. He doesn't catch this one properly, but it's on target. And as, as soon as, as long as it's on target, you always got a chance of scoring. But it's great adjustment here. Goalkeeper just can't reach and it sneaks in. Four. Crawford for Bullen. Early ball in, Brewster. Laid off, and then Fermlin a level. Jason Dare has equalised, and I box this side to you, as well as the action here, and it's quite compelling at the moment. And Rangers clearly have the wind taken out of their sails. And they have they've got to pick it up again as they're trying to do now for Michael Moles. The Burrs lay off, McGrorty to Grondon and back again. Amoruso to Rickson. Under Burr, Rickson again, Kinesia! He likes to film one, doesn't he? His seventh goal of the season against the East End Park side. And that has Rangers back in front, two goals to one, 16 minutes gone. This is a great finish, but Fernando Rickson plays a very important part in this. You know, he could have gave this round one up, kept fighting for it, looking after Cal finishing. Don't panic, don't hammer the ball, get it on target, pick your spot. Everything is so calm, collected, and that's why the ball's the back of the net. In the 29th minutes at Ibrox, Rangers 2-1 ahead. Teta's delivery. Craig Brewster was at the near post to head the ball away. Clever header from Ferguson down to the feet of Arteta. And back to the captain. Now with Newman. Squared for Rickson. Everyone back for Infirmlin as Rickson lofts it in. And Amoruso did so well to stop that crossing the line. What a bad ball in Edward! score Rangers third we've not played half an hour and Rangers have a 3-1 lead you can't see enough about Lorenzo Amoruso here he's got no right to get this one he keeps it in but he's not happy with that he wants the ball back in the box that's a great delivery Arvalanza attacks it really well turns the ball across the goalkeeper to the far post it's a great header it's still a, he's too close he's still to give him a chance to react it's a fine goal and if that was a parting present from Louis it in. Jason Dare is there. Craig Brewster! Wonder save from Stefan Gloss. And you just wonder if that, in the final reckoning, could be a title winning save. Three nil Celtic at Rugby Park. Three one Rangers at Ibrox. Celtic have the edge. Rangers look to score. McCann's delivery! De Burrell's header! 4-1 Rangers! That's a magnificent header. What a ball from Neil McCann. Rob De Burrell does that so often. It's not by accident. It's just great play. It's a marvellous ball in. Ask him to get attacked. And you won't find any better striking than that. Ronald De Burrell's 20th goal of the season. It's 4-1 to Celtic's 3-0 on this. They've now scored 16 league goals against Dunfermline in four games this season. McCann turns away from Mason, gets to the byline, and Stephen Thompson scores Rangers' 100th league goal of the season. It's the fifth against Dunfermline, and it might be the goal that points Rangers towards the championship. 
It's a brilliant piece of play from Neil McCann down the left hand side. That man there, Stephen Thompson, he'll get the, the glory of sticking in the back of the net. But watch this, he cut across the defender, hard and low, so hard to defend against. He gets the break, no question about that. But you've got to be there, got to be attacking it. But don't underestimate Neil McCann here. Great ball in. Yeah, it was Lee Bullen who tried to clear it, Sandia, and Lee Bullen played it off Stephen Thompson into the back of the net. Rangers weren't really bothered about how it went in. And Alec McLeish celebrates a fifth Rangers. Reverse pass from McCann for Newman. Thompson! It stays out! So close to number six. And that would have... And Fremont have lost it. Stephen Thompson meanders his way through. Stephen Thompson's shot. Derek still... Newman summoning up every ounce of energy to get forward in his closing minutes. McCann gets it back from De Boer. Neil McCann. It's a penalty. It's a penalty against Mark McGarty. And Rangers could close this out with a late penalty. Thompson missed his at Rugby Park. Can Rangers make a can? Remember, they've missed three in the last few weeks. It's a great move from Rangers to win the penalty kick. Neil McCann, so impressive second half. His pace has been unbelievable, and I wonder who'll take it. He's the captain. You've got Ronald De Boer as well. Talking to Alan McLeish at this moment. Nicola Tetters round about the ball as well. Arteta, it was. He scored at Dens Park after Barry Ferguson had missed twice in the same game. And it's he who offers himself to take all the pressure on his young shoulders. Mikel Arteta in his first season at Rangers could clinch the title for his team. Ronald De Boer can't look. He's right in front of him. McLeish can't look at the, the penalty. Ronald De Boer will wait for the reaction from the crowd to tell him what's happened here. This could be the championship winning goal if Mikel Arteta can hold his nerve. He can! Rangers 6, Dunfermline 1 and the championship appears to be Rangers. A perfect penalty kick, lots of guts from Arteta to take it in the first place but that's composure, he makes his mind up, he's got pace in the ball there's power on it, and straight in the corner, giving the goalkeeper no chance, and he looks really happy. He held his nerve at Dens Park, he held his nerve here at Ibrox to score his fifth goal of the season, and never has there been a more valuable goal for Rangers. Rangers hope they've won the title it's been such a nail-biting climax to the championship campaign that uh, they won't want to launch into full celebration mode until they know the final score from rugby park it's 4-0 celtic 6-1 rangers here against dunfermline if the scoreline stay that way Rangers have the title. There's tension written all over the face of Martin O'Neill. Johan Mialbe tries to grab the ball back. Celtic looking to salvage the situation for the final whistle goes at Rugby Park. Rangers have won their 50th title. In his 80th game as Rangers manager. Alec McLeish has a championship to celebrate. Never will you see a more amazing end to a title running than this. The pendulum has swung back and forth. Celtic with heads and hands at Rugby Park. The tears will flow here at Ibrox. It's all smiles because Rangers have won the title and Alec McLeish has landed his fourth trophy in 18 months and he could make it five next weekend with the Tennant Scottish Cup.
the pendulum has constantly swung back and fro between Rangers and Celtic. Finally, it rests at Arbrox, and Mikel Arteta's penalty sealed it. Rangers have won the league, but it would be difficult to describe Celtic as losers. Let's say it's, it's been two fantastic teams, a marvellous effort from both squads of players right from the start of the season. But I did tip Rangers at the start of the season to win the league. Under Alan McLeish, they've been immense, and that big man there, I watched him when the, the final whistle came through from Rugby Park, and he was so happy. And I'm pleased for him, he's a marvellous manager and he's done incredible well in these short spell at Rangers so far. Well, it's heartbreak times two for those Celtic supporters and players losing the UEFA Cup in midweek, losing the title the following Sunday. And look at the contrast in the expressions. At Ibrox, it's hugs and cheers. And what a job Alec McLeish has done. It's not his team. These are the players he inherited from Dick Advocat. But what a performance he's got out of his squad. It's total transformation. It's total jubilation at Ibrox. Rangers have won the championship. And Celtic's domination since Martin O'Neill took control has been ended here at Ibrox. And with that result at Rugby Park as well. A game here of such significance and uh, Rugby Park was rather important too. Let's hear from Ronald DeBerg. Ronald, congratulations, uh, first of all, man of the match, Alan. First of all, being champions. That was unbelievable drama out there, was it not? I think for the viewers at home, they must be going mental, uh, mentally crazy. Uh, even, of course, the, the last uh, penalty, you knew you had to make it. And you know the story behind the penalties, so... Uh, Oh, unbelievable, what an ending. I saw you, I watched you, you couldn't watch the penalty get taken. No, uh, normally if you don't watch it goes in, so... <laughs> I'm not superstitious, by the way. <laughs> were, you, were you worried, that, did, did you, first of all, were you full of knowledge of what was happening at Rugby Park? Yeah, but then uh, at the last like six minutes, uh, I, I felt that we, uh, we needed one goal more. But you saw the tiredness in our team, we couldn't press a little bit. All second balls were... Uh, well, for them, uh, so uh, we struggled, and uh, at the end, uh, yeah, the penalty so unbelievable. I, I, I feel sorry for Celtic because they fought hard for it, and uh, but at the end, uh, I think we also deserved it. That afternoon just seemed to fly by. I, I, I'm difficult remembering how the goals came, how the goals were scored. Did you feel like that yourself? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it went so quickly, everything, and uh, I think we didn't play really well. And suddenly, we had a spell of uh, two goals, a uh, quick. Uh, Quickly and then, and then a bet uh, after that again. But uh, at the end, uh, sick nothing to do with all the players. Absolutely, Ronnie. I think I've spent this uh, the whole season giving you champagne. Yeah. I'm sure these bottles built tonight. Thank you, Scotland, man, for that champagne. Well done again. Cheers, Ronnie. Thanks very much. Well, you saw the trophy arriving outside Ibrox. It started off the afternoon at Hamden, and uh, Premier League officials weren't too sure whether they would be going to Rugby Park or whether they would be coming here to Ibrox, and uh, that certainty has not grown much in the course of the afternoon. They haven't really known from one moment to another whether it was going to be Rangers or whether it was going to be Celtic. Finally, it's Rangers who've clinched the championship, and that trophy at the moment will be carried through the corridors of Ibrox and shortly out onto the pitch, and these Rangers supporters will greet the 50th title triumph by their team. And it's a remarkable success for Alec McLeish when you consider that the spending days have gone as Rangers manager. He's had to produce from the players already on the staff. He's had some talent, obviously, in players like Ferguson and De Boer and Kloss, but he's had to squeeze a little bit more out of some of the others who maybe weren't delivering value for money previously. But uh, how he's brought them all together, and it's all ended in this party atmosphere at Ibrox as Rangers have won the league title on goal difference. It couldn't have been much tighter, it couldn't have been more tense right throughout this Sunday afternoon. I've certainly never known anything quite like it. And 
This is as much an outpouring of relief from the Rangers fans as it is pure delight that their team have come out on top. 38 games apiece, Rangers and Celtic, and in the end, it's come down to goal difference. It's been incredible. It really has, and we're talking about Alan McLeish there, you're right, he hasn't spent any, any money of any significance. But the one thing he has done, he's bonded this squad together. I think uh, my man in the match today, Ron De Boer, that's probably the one that sums up for me more than anyone else. He certainly wasn't playing too well when Alec came at first, and only had one or two injuries, but he's developed it, he's not developed into it. He's become the player he was before he came to Ivan Sunday McLeish, and you've got to give big Alec credit for getting the very, very best out of such a nationalist. But as a team effort, it takes every single player in your squad to contribute. It's going to win a league. The Rangers and Celtic pushed each other all the way for so long. The Celtic got the result here a few weeks back. Pedro maybe went back towards them. But uh, Rangers took up the gauntlet. And, well, today's the all the ice on the cake. And there's the silver lining to uh, the Rangers' season. For the second time, the CIS Cup is already theirs. They hope the Tenant Scottish Cup might be theirs next weekend. But this is the biggest prize of them all. This is no sprint, this is a marathon. And if you win the league championship, you know you've done your job right throughout the season. And Rangers have had to be at their best. Celtic have ensured that. It's been the most captivating confrontation between these most fierce of rivals. Rangers sixth and Fremlin one, the scoreline tells the story. Michael Moles, Heidi Okanesia, Shota Arvaladze, Ronald De Boer, Stephen Thompson and Mikel Arteta's penalty right at the end. That's not the real trophy, by the way. That's, uh, that's one he made earlier. And at Rugby Park, Chris Sutton scored twice, Alan Thompson with a penalty, and Alan Thompson with a crucial missed penalty as well before Stylian Petrov scored, Celtic score. And there will be all sorts of incriminations and reflections on what happened here and what happened there. But uh, neither of these teams was ever going to be described as a failure. Both have done their job, both finish on 97 points. Rangers have won it by the closest of margins. What an afternoon. I think, Rob, when you look back at the game here as well, but Fairman didn't play badly. <laughs> they did work so hard right off that the mic. game, but they were eventually pummeled into defeat. That's the scoreline, which confirms that it's Rangers who have won the Bank of Scotland Premier League Championship. You could not script this final day drama. I was at Dens Park in 1986, I was at Ibrox in 1991. Those were both incredibly tight finishes, but there has never been anything quite like this. There is the trophy. This will be the presentation the Rangers fans wanted. Let's go back to Rob McLean. Thanks, Dougie. It all started with drop points at Kilmarnock. It certainly didn't look at that stage as if the season would end in glory. But how Rangers have performed since then. And ironically enough, it's all ended at Kilmarnock for Celtic this season. But they surely couldn't have done more than to win by four goals to nil against a team who performed so well this season. And it took six goals from Rangers here against Dunfermline to ensure that the title would end up at Ibrox. It will be the sweetest of moments when Barry Ferguson steps out to receive the Bank of Scotland Premier League trophy. At one point, Rangers were 11 points clear of Celtic. That was largely down to games in hand, with Celtic doing so well in European competition. 
but in reality there's never really been too much between them. Celtic rallied in the last month or so and closed the gap completely. And finally, it all came down to this. Two games and the two results were going to decide who would be champions and who would be losers. But how can you really describe Celtic as losers when they've given so much? Sensational season for them reaching the final of the UEFA Cup. But it may well be that now Rangers go on to claim the treble. Jim Duffy's Dundee will have something to say about that next weekend. But that trophy will shortly be sitting alongside the CIS Cup in the Ibrox Trophy Room. And then it's all down to Hamden Park next Saturday afternoon. There were lots of questions about this Rangers team. Did they have a goal poacher? Could they score often enough to get the nod over Celtic? Did they have the bottle? They certainly had the talent, we always knew that. But could they tough it out head-to-head -head with Celtic in the title running? They've come up with the answer. They have all the things you said, Rob. Bottle was certainly there. And we talk about not having a proven goal scorer. They've actually scored more goals with Celtic over the league campaign. So that certainly answers that one. They're a different type of team. Celtic are strong, powerful. It's going from lots of set pieces with the, the big guys they have. The Rangers pass the ball through in the middle of the park. They pass it so well. Create so many opportunities. They score goals because of that. A world record 50th league championship for Rangers. And never could it have come in more dramatic circumstances. It may well be an Ibrox farewell for Lorenzo Amoruso. The clever money is on Amoruso playing for Blackburn Rovers in the English Premiership next season. But for now, all that is on the back burner. Championship winner's medal for Lorenzo Amoruso. Neil McCann needed a big influence in the second half. Mikel Arteta's penalty finally calmed the nerves. Craig Moore was solid in central defence as ever. There's a medal for Bob Malcolm, who deputised so well when Amoruso and Moore were missing. Stefan Klaus, what can one say about a top-class keeper? Alan McGregor, the substitute goalkeeper, Stephen McLean. It's a medal draped round his neck. Stephen Thompson on as a sub, scored one of the half dozen. This half, Rickson has given his all for Rangers this season. Ronald De Boer, simply superb. Uh, Peter Lovingcraft, who's just signed an extension to his Rangers contract. Shota Arbeladze gets his medal. Claudio Canizia behind oh. him. Oh. And Michael Moles gets his. Let's hear from Malik McLeish. Well, in fact, we'll hear from Malik in a minute because uh, he steps up as well to get his prize. Boris Ross and Stephen Hughes, two young Scots in the Rangers squad. A hug for the skipper from the manager as Kevin Muscat and Bert Conto and get their medals as well. And a hug from Alex Gold of the Premier League for Alec McLeish. And the moment for Barry Ferguson is almost here. He's licking his lips at the prospect. Two cups last season, another cup to add to that collection earlier this season. But this is the prize that matters most. Arthur Newman gets his medal. Newman will bid farewell to Rangers in the summer. And uh, there's Dan Egan, if you're wondering where he got to. Mammoth party is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bank of Scotland Upsteps Premier League champions. Barry Ferguson. 2002-2003 Rangers Football Club. 
Rangers are champions. And you can see exactly how that feels for Barry Ferguson. You can hear exactly how it feels for 50,000 Rangers supporters. The Celtic domination of the last couple of years has been ended. And we can now hear from the Rangers manager. Alec, the most stupid question of the season, how does it feel? No, I, I mean, it, it feels absolutely wonderful, but, but you know, the, the dividing line between success and failure is, is so thin, and one minute we looked out of it, and, and then when the, the big steward told me that it was over at Rugby Park, it was heaven, heaven. It's an astonishing first season, well, first complete season for you. Were you. Did you always feel confident you would end up with this championship trophy? Well, I, I don't think you, you, you can be too presumptuous or count your chickens. It was important that we kept focused, and these players have exceeded my expectations. You were going through the ringer this afternoon, I was watching that dugout, and then watched the roller coaster, wasn't it? Well, I was looking at your face as well, and I could see the look of concern on your face. But, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was turmoil, but at the same time, anybody who hasn't been able to live that kind of atmosphere and, and emotions, it's, it, they're missing something. The atmosphere in here is just unbelievable. The atmosphere's fantastic. I'm really happy for my family. Um, they're here to watch me and my, my mother, my sister, my brother, and uh, Frank and everybody at home. I think you want to give these fans a bit of a wave as well, do you not? Thanks. Well done, Art. In the end, it came down to goal difference. That was the only way you could put anything between Rangers and Celtic. And to beat Celtic, Rangers had to be good, very good. Michael Knowles, big question mark hanging over his future. Seems as if he'll move on in the summer after 14 goals this season. And only one of those 14 came away from Ibrox. He likes it here and he will be sorry to leave. Amoruso looks to be leaving as well as Alec McLeish reshapes for next season. And it's a family celebration for Captain Barry Ferguson. Made the decision to stay with Rangers rather than accepting offers from elsewhere. And now Rangers are champions. And he's lifted the trophy as captain and what an inspirational captain he's been. Let's hear from Lorenzo Amoruso. Lorenzo, what does this mean to you? Oh, a lot. A lot. You know, I've been here for six years. I lost everything the first season when I came here. I've been out for ten months. Won two leagues in a row, lost two in a row. This season, you know, we started with different attitude. New manager, of course. Same great attitude as a normal. And we just won it. We won it in the last minute of the last game of the last anything. But it's the most important one because come late, come late, but it really is the best one, definitely. You can hear what the supporters think about you. You're going to be a Rangers player next season. I really hope. Listen, everything is just in hold at the moment. We know that the club has some problems. And of course, we are working on it. I hope really to stay here because Rangers is my life. Nothing more than today. That's it. Well, there you heard the reaction from the Rangers supporter as Lorenzo Amoruso explains he wants to stay, but uh, will he be going? Two Fergusons in front of the camera now. Chick's going to speak to one of them. Barry, congratulations and incredible performance this afternoon. Whole family to enjoy it. Were you nervous at any stage this afternoon? Uh, oh, I was really nervous. Um, I didn't sleep last night. Um, just to win it, it's, it's the best feeling I've ever had. Uh, the guys were great today. Um, all credit to Celtic, they a good result. I think they won 4-0, but at the end of the day, we needed to win here and get a right result, and that's what we did. And it's not over yet. There's a, a treble to be won, a cup final next week. I'm going to enjoy the night first, then we'll think about that tomorrow. Was there any point in the season you felt this is not going to be our year? Um, no, I did. Um, after I missed the two penalties at Dundee, I was really down. Um, 
But the guys and all the fans have been great to me. And we come back and we get a terrific result against Kilmarnock then Hearts time they won it today. And, and ironical that a penalty should eventually clinch it in the end for Rangers after the, the season you've had from 12 yards. I know, eh, but I've had my chance, I've missed my two penalties, so it's somebody else's turn now. We're going to go enjoy it. So. Enjoy it, Barry. Sure. A kiss for the trophy from the manager who, well, you can only think what his feelings are at the moment. What an achievement for Alec McLeish, 18 months in charge. He's turned things around. When you consider that last season, Celtic won the trophy by the mammoth margin of 18 points. What a turnaround. It was a bit closer this time. <laughs> Goal difference of one was the margin between Rangers and Celtic. Chick was speaking to Barry Ferguson there, the Football Writers Player of the Year, the Players Player of the Year, and what a day it's been for Stephen Thompson as well. Seen the head dress smart of Stevie, but you come on as substitute, you get the goal, that just about does it, what a day for you. It was, uh, it was unbelievable, it was just frightening, I can't explain to you how good an experience that was. My goal was probably the worst goal I'll ever score, but I'll take it any day of the week. Yeah, it was Syker's favourite distance, about two feet. I think it was even less than that, it was about two inches, so I'll settle for that any day. Was the dressing room half-time, was that a nervous place? It wasn't, no, I think we were fairly confident, we knew that um, if we scored early, which we did, I don't think we were expecting Dunfermline to score quite so soon after we got our first, but we showed great character in getting the rest of the goals, and uh, the crowd were superb and cheering us on. Do you feel that's made you a Rangers player now? <laughs> really? I hope so, I hope so. I like the headgear will help. And that'll do me. I'm having a great night. Cheers. Cheers, Davey. Well, scenes of terrific jubilation at Ibrox, but relief as much as jubilation, I'm sure, because with five minutes left this afternoon, the title could still have gone either way. It was the most remarkable afternoon of football drama. And along with me are Walter Smith and Gordon uh, Smith and uh, Craig Burley. And uh, they've been watching these remarkable scenes and an afternoon when everyone was on the very edge of the seat. Walter, it's a scene you know well, of course. You've been there many times. Uh, but you would never, ever be sure that that was going to happen today. No, it was a remarkable afternoon. We were sitting here, we obviously, to work both games. And uh, it was a fantastic afternoon. It was entertainment for everybody that was at home there. I think you know both teams have to be congratulated for the effort they put in to make it that way this afternoon. It was fantastic. And uh, a word for Dunfermline and for Kilmarnock. There was no hint of making it easy for the big two, Gordon. Uh, they were both heavily beaten in the end, but both of them gave 100%. According to what I saw, they, they definitely did try very hard, both sides, and they were just overpowered by two teams today, Rangers and Celtic, they were desperate to win the championship and you know Celtic in particular it's an amazing performance and result down at Rugby Park and some incredible stuff that happened but you know Rangers in the end up got the goals and it's a team that everyone said you know they liked a goal scorer and they've, they've hit over 100 goals it in, in six in the last day yeah, without an out and out target, target man absolutely right let's take a look back at the goals then that in the end were enough for Rangers to win Chris Sutton afterwards naturally was bitterly disappointed can you believe that uh, that season that has been so rosy for so long <laughs> has ended with, with nothing? Uh, that's the way it goes. I mean, you know, we knew Rangers are a good side, but uh, you know, I think uh, today is a bit of a hollow victory for them, to be honest. Um, as I say, I think everybody could have virtually predicted the, the result at Ibrox before kick-off. Well, many people did. And uh, I think it's disappointing from the players who have put the effort in. Uh, you know, we knew they'd lie down and, and they have done. Do you think they've not been professional, Don Fram, in the way they've played? Uh, you'll have to ask uh, their manager and the players. Yeah. Harsh words from Chris Sutton, understandable in the disappointment, but uh, we watched that game go on, and I don't think he's right, do you? No, I think uh, he might find that unfortunate comment to make, actually, about mm. it, because watching the game, watching across both games, Dunfermline were certainly giving their all. They were even, in the end, up sitting defensively very tight. Walter was watching it across it more than even me. He was watching it specifically. Dunfermline sat in and were making it very difficult for Rangers to create any chances, and they were having to work very hard to do it, but Dunfermline were certainly working hard. Mm. Yeah. Over the piece, I mean, I presume you're delighted, Walter. I mean, you've had so many good times with, with the club, but uh, I mean, to win it in the end by one goal and goal difference, finishing level in points, it's, it's very cruel on, on the losing side, isn't it? It's cruel, but I mean, again, to, you know, Celtic, I don't think they want you to feel sorry for them in mm. any way. I think uh, they've given it their best shot. They've had a European campaign to contend with and come back from very difficult European matches and win league games and keep themselves in contention. And they've shown this season 
a tremendous will to win mm. and uh, even though at the end there's no trophies for them I think they have shown a tremendous spirit and you know Martin O'Neill um, has to be congratulated for engendering that type of spirit within them and on the other side of it from a managerial point of view Alan McLeish couldn't do more 18 points away last season he's closed that gap he's managed to win the championship possibly a treble um, next week if they can win the cup and uh, that's a fantastic achievement mm. I think both managers take enormous credit for there and I'd be disappointed if anybody thought that Dunfermline didn't try in that game um, this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. We'll go along with that. And credit to both 